Welcome back to the Chill and Chat and Talk Show. Always looking forward to chilling and chatting. Yes, and so speaking of chatting, I got an interesting phone call this week. Oh, really? From who? My ex-husband. You Your know? ex-husband? Yes, my ex-husband. Oh my goodness. Yes, I did tell you I was married before, right? Yes, I did They're know very that. very short, two and a half years, yes. many years ago. <laughs> and why was he calling? Well, I hadn't spoken to him for probably 10, 12 years, a very long time. And I, you uh, haven't talked for 10 or 12 years and you just get And a he call. suddenly calls me. Oh well, my he, goodness. He actually had emailed me and I thought it was spam because I didn't, I'm like somebody yeah. was asking me for my birth date and I'm like, okay, I'm not going to answer this. Oh. But then I figured out who it was. Right. So, um, yeah, you know, he called me because he needed to know my birth date and where okay. I was born. <laughs> he didn't know that in the first place? He didn't remember. Okay. But, you know, he's a guy, lots of guys forget right. those things. And he is an ex. And he is an ex. Yes. Nice guy though. <laughs> even though he is an ex. But anyways, uh, apparently he was renewing his Italian passport, which he's always had all his life since mm -hmm. he was a kid because he's got Italian citizenship. Right. And um, this time when he was renewing his passport, well, they go, well, what about your your wife, Patricia Vroom? Oh. And he was like, <laughs> well, we, we've been divorced since like 1990. <laughs> and, uh, and they said, well, according to Italy, oh. we're not divorced. The Catholic church there, they take these things very seriously. Oh my goodness. So we're, apparently we were still kind of married in Italy. So Wait. he had to <laughs> do some final, uh, he had to do some final divorce papers with Oh my goodness, so you have two husbands? No, I don't, like, I only have one. Okay, what do they call that? There's some word for that. I don't know, but I only have one. But interestingly, if we would have been able to go to Italy last June, I wouldn't have known it, but I would have been married to him while I was in Italy. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, when we go there next time, we have to go visit him, because then I get to see someone You know, he did husband. invite us. He invited us to come visit oh, him. Oh, there you yes, go. That would you, be if you guys, very if you interesting. Want to meet him. <laughs> Anyways, uh, it should be done really soon. So you won't be having two husbands then? No, and I okay. don't. I really don't. Anyways, Very interesting. something even more interesting mm. though is the story he told me. Mm. So if any of our viewers could look up China Northern Airlines flight 31 or 6136, it's in Wikipedia. Okay. So on that story, Vince was telling me the story how he used to teach in China and he'd go from different areas of China. Right. So he was, on, he was on his way to the other side of China and they had him all booked on a plane. And uh, they, he thought, you know, it'd be really cool to well, see hang on, the, who's they, the the organization he worked for. Okay. And so it would be really cool if I took the train. Right. So he thought, because he'd love to see the landscape of China. So he called them, and they went, oh sure, we'll book you in a train. So they booked him in a train, and then he was looking at his teaching schedule, and he realized, oh, this isn't going to work. I have to teach like an hour after I arrive from the train station. Right the next day and and he said no there's no way that's going to work so he called them back again and he said oh i i need to get that flight back because it's not going to work with the train well they went sure so and then an hour later they called him back and said sorry the last seat was sold you can't get on the flight and he went okay i guess i'm taking the train <laughs> so then he gets to the school where he's yeah. teaching and as he's walking to the school because the students recognized him and they mm -hmm. and they started everyone was looking in total shock and he couldn't understand why everyone was in hmm. so much shock. Right. And then he gets to his classroom, and there's a substitute teacher there. And he goes, uh, uh, aren't I teaching this class? And they went, and all the, everyone's like looking at him. And they went, we thought you were dead. And he goes, what? He, they said, well, the plane that you, yeah. that, that you were on, it uh, crashed. Oh, my goodness. I know. Oh, and that's traumatic. That's horrible. It was very traumatic. And... They, he was still listed as a passenger, so then they called the university and they, and so then the they plane, announced it to the, all the students yeah. that he had died in this plane crash. So the plane that he was going to fly on was the one that actually crashed? Yes, oh it was that goodness. flight, and that is, it was actually terrible. It was a bomb right. that went off, or some kind of homemade Aww. bomb. I'm not sure. It's a, I read so up a sad. little bit on it, but very, very yeah. sad. Hundred Over 100 yeah. passengers, and... Uh, but what a wake up call for him. Yeah, he but, was like, he was supposed yes. to be on that yeah. plane. And in what fact, if that changed some, some, the way he thought? Or I, well, things I'm he sure, wanted to I'm do? I'm sure or, it did. Yeah, that'd I'm be sure interesting to ask him. But, but yeah, so, so you just never know. You know, you no. never know. Oh, that is scary. And it's uh, very you know, scary. dramatic. I almost need a glass of wine just even talking about this. Well, <laughs> speaking of wine, up next, Utterly what? Uncorked. Well, I'm really looking forward.
forward to our wine today. I know, you picked a really nice one. It's very full mm -hmm. body. Yeah. Mm. Very oh, body. I can smell it right from here from my chin. That means it's pronounced, again, full mm. body. Nice. Mmm. Oh, and so what we're drinking is the Hugging Tree Moonchild Merlot 2015. Yeah, 2015. That's supposed to be a really good year yes, for it BC was. because yes. of the, you know, particularly hot summers. It was a very yeah. hot summer that yeah. summer, yes. Yeah. And um, also the winery called Hugging Tree. Yeah. The, it's from Carameas. From Carameas. Yeah, right yes. close to Carameas, yes. right? Yeah, so on the between Carameas and Asuyas. Yes. They're yeah. named after two trees hugging. Aww, and they got these so two trees so close. So close <laughs> together. It looks like they're hugging. And of course they were really hugging and they got the moon child. Moon child. Oh. Nice. <laughs> I love that. So let's give it a, okay. a swirl, swirl and a taste. Swirl and a sniff. Mmm. Lovely. Oh, cheers. Cheers. Mmm, mm. that's really nice. Oh, very full body, mm -hmm. plum, very pronounced mm -hmm. plum. And something really mm. distinct about that. I yeah. think like, I mean it's full body, but it's very dry also. It's and I very think that's dry. what makes that yeah. distinct taste. It's really good, love it. Okay, again. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. One more. Yeah, <laughs> one more. Well, I actually yeah. went to the liquor store yeah. or to the wine store yeah. to buy Niagara on the Lake wine. So. Yeah, you were saying that, that you were going to get one. And to my surprise, and maybe not to my yeah. surprise, there were none. There was no so wine from Niagara from that, on the Lake. From, the, from Ontario, from, yeah. From Ontario, nothing here. Yeah, so we thought that would yeah. be really cool to do an Ontario yeah. wine. So I'm going to have to go there to get it, I think. Yes. Okay, well, <laughs> next time you go there, you can bring it back. I will bring back yes. an Ontario yes. wine. So, but that's interesting because every time I go to Toronto, mm -hmm. I can hardly find any BC wines. And I, I've I always had that wanna, same experience. Yeah, and I always yeah, want to buy it so I can tell my yeah. friends, you gotta try this wine, but yeah. they don't have it in their liquor stores. They, they, they just had Mission Hill yeah. and one other one, yeah. like one or two bottles of Mission Hill, and that was it. Yeah, I went to their Ontario liquor stores because I wanted BC wines because I missed my BC <laughs> wine. There was nothing. I know, yeah. that's just so crazy. Yeah. Um, why don't they share? Why don't they? I don't know why yeah. they don't share. Yeah. Okay, so we just put that out there. Yes. Well, Ontario, we need your wines, and Ontario, you need our wines. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yes. yes, there it is. So, um, speaking of Niagara and the Lake, mm -hmm. you know, what's interesting is that is one of the places I went for my honeymoon. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. Tell me about that. Well, when Bruce and I got married in yeah. 1990, we had no plans. And after what, the, on, what do you mean, no plans? We had no honeymoon plans. You had no plans? No. Like, well, actually, mean, that's not true. He, my husband, Bruce, had booked our honeymoon suite, and that's it. That's it. And then we had decided that from that moment on, we would just go driving and go on on an adventure and stay wherever. Oh my goodness! <laughs> and so our second night was in in Niagara Aww. Falls on the U.S. side. Yes, well, it's so beautiful there. Oh yeah, yeah. and then we just went south, yeah. we went as far as Key West. Yeah, had an adventure and just Where, stayed on, wherever. Key, where's Key West? Like Key West, Florida. Oh, yeah. you drove all the way down to Florida. I mean, we did take a little uh, cruiser over to Bahamas as well. Oh wow! It's a whole month long. Wow, a whole month for your honeymoon. Yes, we just nice. got the car and we went. Let's just go. That's you know, cool. young. You could just yeah. do those kind of things. I mean, that sounds like fun. Yeah. Did like, you did you have uh, organized honeymoon? I'm gonna guess. <laughs> Absolutely organized. <laughs> okay, tell everyone about months you. before. <laughs> <laughs> months before. Absolutely. Oh, ours yes. was just like I don't know what yes. we're doing. Let's just drive. Okay, what did, where did you guys go? Interesting. Um, we uh, well, we got married in the Okanagan, obviously, right. and uh, then we um, flew to Hawaii and had a week in Hawaii, and then a few days, and then flew to San Diego. It's kind of like a oh wow, it was a package deal, and, nice. and then we flew to San Diego and stayed there for I think four nights and. We went to Disneyland, which is like my favorite. Oh, we went to Disney yeah. uh, Universal Studios, yeah. I believe. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Disney La Disneyland, Disney yeah. World was on our yes. plan for yes. sure. Yes. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, totally organized, everything planned. I can just imagine, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and I can see that you wouldn't have it planned. No. Yeah. No, I'm more the adventurous <laughs> type. Let's just see what happens. Uh, I don't know if that's quite more adventuresome, just because you don't plan. But <laughs> well, okay. I'm not saying that you're not. I'm. I'm not saying I'm more adventurous than you. Okay. But I just like that. It was just so freeing and so fun to do yes. that. You should try it sometime. Mm. Jump in a car, go on vacation, hey, when and I, not know where no, you're going. When I go on vacation, <laughs> I have my little book that I've typed out every single thing from when I'm going from one day to the next and what we're doing on that day like I literally guess that's what we're doing when we go to Italy too ev yes there won't will be, be anything but you know what we won't miss a thing and it'll be fantastic okay I do great fun. so let's switch gears we, okay. we we're doing the trivia trivia cards every uh, okay week. so we're gonna pick yes. a trivia okay. card and do you want me to go first 
Ah, uh, like first that you asked me the question? Yes. Okay, sure. All right, so I'm gonna ask you, there's um, the category, oh, I had the category sheet out here, it's gone now. Oh. Uh, I'm gonna ask you, um, okay. True or false, in the United States, the challenging Pinot Noir grape has done well in Okanagan and the cooler regions of California. Uh, of California. True or false? Sorry, say that again. <laughs> okay. In the United States, the challenging Pinot Noir okay. grapes, yeah. they've done well in Oregon mm -hmm. and in the cooler regions of California. True or false? True. True, yeah. you got it right. Cool. Woo. All right. Okay, um, I'm gonna do this one. Okay. All right. Uh -huh. Okay, let's try this one. Who is buying the most wine in the United States, which is probably Canada too, men or women? Ooh. Well, you know, men like the beer and the mm -hmm. hard liquor. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say women buy more wine than men. I would say so too. But what is women? According to the Wine Institute, women purchase 57% of the wine consumed in the United States. Wow, yeah. cheers women yes. out there. Hey to women. Cheers. <laughs>Wow, mm -hmm. the Hugging Tree Winery. Their 2015 Merlot from the Carameas area, did I say that right? Was amazing. <laughs> you said it right. And yeah, very distinctive taste. Bold, but very dry. Must have been the high tannins that um, made it that way, but it was very lovely. It I loved sure it. Yeah. was. Yeah. Anyways, we've got mail. Yeah. I'm gonna read it. <laughs> All right, dear Trish and Jenny. Hi ladies, love your show. Aww. Just wondering, what is the weirdest place you have fallen asleep? <laughs> Warm regards, Anita from Langley. Well, that's a very interesting question, Anita. I, I'm sensing that you may have fallen asleep in weird places, so yeah. do we have a story? I actually don't, but Jenny, I always sleep okay. in my bed or a tent. These are crazy questions, <laughs> but um, what, you haven't had a weird place? No. Really? No, oh. I've always slept in my bed. Okay. Or, you know. A camping, but that's it. Okay. What do you define weird? Well, I don't know. I probably have a few that I could probably share, but... Um, you have a few? Well, just, yeah. Anyway, um... Okay, <laughs> well, let's hear one. We're PG rated though, right? Of course. Actually okay. G, but... Okay. Um, I, I probably think out of the few I'm thinking, the most weirdest is the one on the evening of our suitcase party that we had in... Um, Vancouver, downtown Vancouver. Okay, East, wait, East. what's a suitcase party? Um, so a suitcase party is where everybody arrives to the party, a big hall is rented, and mm -hmm. this is university years, just saying. Okay. And everyone brings their suitcase, and it's kind of like a raffle. And you go home with somebody? Like a raffle where you go home with someone else? Uh, no. Oh, okay, so I'm someone, to someone wins um, a trip to Hawaii that night. Oh. So a name is drawn, and someone and their guest gets into a limo, they go to the airport and they actually fly to Hawaii um, for a week. So, so they actually comes go leave that night and go yes. to the airport. Yes, exactly. Well, how did they arrange that? I guess it wasn't as strict as it is now. Well, no, this was, like I said, oh, ages okay. ago. But wow. Anyway, so, um, you know, I had a lot ages of... Ages ago, eh? <laughs> yeah, actually, it was ages ago. <laughs> anyway, so, um, you know, I had a bunch of lemonade and uh, so... Ooh, lemonade. What do you mean by lemonade? <laughs> needed some, you know, air and went out to... Um, the out the back door down a alleyway in East Hastings. And East Hastings. Apparently, I found myself um, cuddled up next to a dumpster. So wow. I, that's how my friends. So found you were me sleeping anyway. next to a dumpster. I was sleeping next to a dumpster. So I have to say that's probably the weirdest. That's pretty. Well, that's probably weird. not just weird, but not smart and very no, unsafe. Yes. No. <laughs> not what we'd want our daughters to do. Never. But. Oh my goodness! If I heard that about my daughter, I'd be like, ah. Yeah. But yeah. Interesting. Wow. Very interesting. <laughs> Lots of things that we've been learning about Jenny over these months. <laughs> Anyways, are we ready for our guest, Jenny? Yes, we are. And we're going to be chatting with Marika Seward, who is a multi-award winning Canadian recording artist, songwriter, and actor based in Langley, BC. Marika has songs playing on major networks like Fox, MTV, wow. NBC, Global Lifetime, and Hallmark. And as an actor, she has appeared on numerous commercials, music videos, and television shows. And today, we'll be talking about a worldwide issue and what, as individuals, we can all do about it. But first, a word from our sponsor.
Welcome, Marika. Welcome. Hi. Great to be back. Uh, good to be back. <laughs> so we did have you mm -hmm. in season one, you and your daughter. It was such a lovely yes. interview. So any updates? How's everything yes. going? Yes, how's the show going? Yeah, well, Mallory Towers in Canada is now on CBC Gem, which people yeah. can watch. And it's in currently also in the U.S. and Australia. Nice. And um, yeah, she's also part of this music group called Apple Pop Kids, which is like in the running to be nominated for a Grammy. So that's really exciting. Oh and goodness. then our whole family just filmed a Christmas special that's going to be out in December. So lots going on. Man, excellent. Oh, wow. And for our viewers who are meeting you for the first time, just share a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. Well, I um, am a singer, a singer and an actress. Uh, I have three kids and a husband, and we're all in the entertainment industry. Um, just doing what we love. Uh, we've always wanted to live, work, and play together, and that's kind of what we do. So I would oh. love to see your household, you know, in action. All of you <laughs> acting, going off to your different shoots. And <laughs> it's a bit crazy sometimes, yes. but it's fun. That's it's a lot awesome. of fun. So, yeah. uh, switching topics a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, uh, a couple of months ago, probably back in June, um, I saw this Facebook post that you wrote that impacted me so mm -hmm. much and I shared it with Jenny mm -hmm. and it really, really hit home with us as mothers and Jenny and I talked about it. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, in, and then of course, you know, we wanted to chat with you about it. We met in Kelowna over tea and wine <laughs> yes. and uh, we just felt that we needed to bring you back on the show to talk about it. Yes, so Marika, could you read the post mm -hmm. to everyone? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, first of all, I want to say I don't I don't get too political or too mm -hmm. intense with my Facebook usually. It's, I usually try to keep it light, but this is definitely something um, after several questions from my friends that I wanted to post about. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Okay. Um, you're all my friends today. So <laughs> Last night I let my oldest stay out later than usual to celebrate his graduation with some friends. He's a great kid with amazing friends and such a brilliant light to this world. Closer to midnight, I wish that I didn't have to think about him getting pulled over by a police officer in the dark just because, just because he's a kid of color out late. I was grateful he was in the car with his white friend driving. He knows I think about it because he texts me to tell me he's okay way too many times than a kid should have to. I wish I didn't have to think about all that, but I do. I always will because of the many times I've been pulled over out late for doing nothing wrong except being black. So I need all of you to hear me. Keep standing up. Please don't be, please don't be just not racist. Be anti-racist. I know there's so much going on in the world right now, politically, socially, medically, religiously, but it's good that we're talking. Maybe if I start sharing my stories, even I might find allies along this journey. Maybe God will bring healing and help. Don't feel bad that you never asked before. I've never really shared before. But I'm starting to see why it's important to share. I'm learning too. Wishing for a day, I don't have to make posts like this one. But I want to be part of inspiring change, even when I don't know how or when. I just want to stay silent and hide because I've been fighting this my whole life. Love has to win. Grace has to be bigger. Wow. wow. That no. is just so I, oh beautifully goodness. written and so powerful. I mean, yeah. I when I mm -hmm. first read it, it brought me to tears mm -hmm. because as a mom, I, you know, five mm -hmm. kids, I've never had to think about those yeah. things. And I and it just was a real yeah. eye-opener eye that yeah. there's people that have to think about those things. And, and I, yeah. we have enough to, w things to worry about yes. with our kids, yeah. far less adding <laughs> another component to it. Yes. Yeah, so that yeah. is very hard. But, you know, that was just so beautifully written and it just made us, you know, want to have a conversation and, and learn more. And bring you to and, our yeah. shows. Yes. Yeah, well, thanks for having the conversation. I know we've talked about it, but I think the best thing is, as I said, inspiring change for mm -hmm. the better, so. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so maybe we can start with explaining what systemic racism is. is. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's basically, ladies, systems mm -hmm. that have historically been in place mm -hmm. that have created and maintained racial inequality. And an easy example of that would be, you know, there's, there's very few, you know, black people in, in leadership positions, mm -hmm. and it's just basically be, be, been because historically white colleges wouldn't have black people in them. Right. And so there's been this, you know, system that has not allowed black people to rise into places of leadership. And obviously that's changing. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's things like that, that even though, you know, many people would consider themselves not racist, the systems that have been in place have caused inequality. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I was reading on it, um, you know, I was looking up things, and one of the things that I read, and this is, of course, in the States, but they're saying that 50% of homelessness is um, people who are black when it's only 13% of the population. That's so that's right. just way too high. Yeah. And it's because, you know, bank loans aren't given out as easily. And so yeah. that shows, again, the system. Just uh, creating just, and maintaining. Yeah, it's so wrong. Yeah. It's so wrong. And I'm glad we are all rising up right now. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, we're, we're going to continue talking more about this. After this message, I understand you have a reel to show us about your acting career and all the things you do. <laughs> sure do. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> this Christmas time, I hope you'll find all the love. packs enough food to last the length of a mission with a safe haven system providing every astronaut even more weeks of food in case of emergency. And you've told us that on any mission things can and will go wrong. Kevin, that's it. No, you're done. What? You are proud of the entire It's mine. Okay, um, what about Mali? The humidity just frizzes my hair out. Okay, um, Reykjavik, Iceland. Whale watching, natural hot springs. It's just so much ice though. Isn't it? Um, it's moderate, actually, but okay. Um, California. Sometimes gasoline can encounter moisture in the fuel distribution system. When this happens, gas gets bloated. That's why there's demulsifier. This disciplined ingredient sheds excess water in the distribution system, so your gasoline stays in tip-top shape. Wow, I love your acting reel. That was hilarious. <laughs> I really like the headband where you wrung it out <laughs> and all this water yeah. came out. <laughs> and then the one, the imposters with the kids getting ice cream. Um, yeah. I saw that on TV. I'm watching it and I'm like, ah, there's Marika. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Loved it. Oh, thanks. That yeah. was awesome. So, um, yeah. getting back to our topic. So, uh, could you share some examples of how you have experienced racism in your mm -hmm. life? Yeah, absolutely. Well, obviously, you know, the, the biggest one, just even from that Facebook post, yeah. is I, I, I'm i always getting pulled over by police officers. I, it's, I, it's, that's, that's shocking yes, to me. Yeah, shocking. Yeah. And, well, and you know what? I never realized it was a racist thing until, uh, you know, I was, I was hearing the comedian Trevor Noah. Uh, I don't know if you, if you know who he is, but he's this incredible comedian from South Africa. And he was sharing how when he first moved to America, um, he would always get pulled over. I'm like, oh, yeah, it happens to everybody. And, and then he was sharing how his white friends were like, Trevor, that's not normal. And I was literally shocked. <laughs> I was like, it. that's not normal? I'm like, oh, my gosh. And so, you know, these things that have happened to me that I didn't even realize were, like, systemically mm -hmm. racist, mm -hmm. but it is. And, yeah. you know, I guess because I'm in the entertainment industry, too, uh, there's always things that I'm up against, whether it's stereotypes or I'm going out for a role and they want like, you know, a black person, but it's like, well, you want Chicago black or New York black? Right. Or I'm like, I'm like Canadian English black, <laughs> like, you know, so it's just, I think it's something that, um, you know, when you are a person of color, of any color, you just kind of accept that there will be things like that, but you don't make it the forefront. I mm -hmm. think it's just, as more people are talking about it, mm -hmm. I realize that, oh my goodness, that's totally a systemically racist thing. You know, mm -hmm. when I was a kid, I have curly hair and people would always touch my hair without asking and I always I always felt weird about it but it's just like I don't go up to my friends and touch their hair yeah. you know and it's just that people I think just felt like they could because it was different mm -hmm. and yet it's something so small but mm -hmm. something that is it, you know kind of makes a bigger picture in right. terms of racism right. exactly so. so what can we do about it like as friends as the community as society like what steps can we take yeah, I think, you know, this is a step, you guys. It's it's really having the conversation. I think what, you know, what was really um, encouraging to me is that you two as friends yeah. saw something that you didn't even realize was going on in my mm -hmm. life, even though we've known each other for so many mm -hmm. years. Um, and it's because I don't necessarily make it the forefront of my life. Right. But you, you chose to call me and you chose to be like, let's have tea, let's get yeah. together, let's yeah. talk about it. And I think for me, you know, in, a lot of people in my culture are being like, don't ask me, I don't want to be asked. And, yeah. and I'm actually saying, actually ask me because I could be your only black friend. Yeah. You know, and I'm mixed black. So, you know, even that 
that is a whole other thing. And so it's, if you don't know, um, you just don't know how to get involved and Mm -hmm. how to change things. And so I think for me, it's just really starting with the conversation. Right. Exactly. That's awesome. So do you see any changes happening now? Yeah, I think the biggest change, especially with the Black Lives Matter movement, Mm -hmm. however you view that, you know, negative or positive, I Mm -hmm. think the biggest thing I've seen that has been encouraging to me is that everybody is getting involved. Mm -hmm. And, you know, typically and historically, it's been the black people marching for black people. And I think it's the first time and really encouraging for me is to see even my white friends um, call me, text me, stand up for me and be like, is this what you actually go through? And I'm like... Yeah, you know, oh, but yeah, I'm, that's... you know, I think for so many years I was always angry that I had to deal with mm-hmm. it. And and I've realized that being angry isn't the solution. It's actually just educating my friends mm-hmm. because I need my white friends mm-hmm. to be, yeah. to stand up for me because yeah. it's, you know, I also need them to stand up for my kids. And I yeah. also need yeah. them to allow me to be, you know, lifted up to positions that I deserve that mm-hmm. maybe I just haven't been able to get just mm-hmm. because of my color. Mm-hmm. So I, I think everyone needs to work together to create the change. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree. And, yes. you know, I love what you said in your post. Um, keep standing up. Please don't just be not racist, be, but be anti-racist. And yeah. I just, I, that's so true. We need the action and uh, start talking, sharing, person to person, friends to friends. And so, so glad that we got a chance to talk to you um, in Kelowna, and uh, yeah, that was a fun. Yeah. That was so fun. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thank you so mm-hmm. much thank for you, being Marika. on our show today. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for having me, yeah. ladies. And up next, treasure trails. <laughs> It's on Chilliwack Lake Road. Let's go! Yay! We have bathrooms! Ooh, this is slippery, Jenny. What? How's it go? We'll go rock climbing? <laughs> it's rock climbing again with go. Jenny. Oh. <laughs> It looks like there's a big rock in our path. (laughs) Okay, that's not stopping us. We're still going. Let's go. We are going to hide the treasure on the other side of the bridge. She took the words right behind this rock when you get off the bridge it's right there now this week's gift is from EA corporate care and it is an alcohol breathalyzer
wonderful platforms for camping. camping. And there's a few of them around here. So if you want to hike up and camp, this is where you go. <laughs> They even have these ropes that you can hang your food up so the bears can't get them. Lake. And what a gorgeous lake. Look Absolutely at the background. Absolutely worth fantastic. it. Oh my goodness. And we're on top of a helicopter, helicopter pad. <laughs> so you can actually helicopter here and you can camp anywhere you want and enjoy this beautiful place. I think weddings I think that, would be nice here. I think the helicopter is for rescuing people, which hopefully we won't need going down this hill in the dark. <laughs> Anyways, happy, happy treasure, treasure hunting! hunting. Welcome back everyone. Love the Lindemann Lake hike. Absolutely beautiful. Yes. Three and a half kilometers out and back. Felt longer. <laughs> <laughs> and though we did start a little late and it was getting really dark near the end. I know. It was a little we scary. We keep forgetting about the time change. I know. It was very dark on our yeah. way back, but wow, that lake. <gasps> So breathtaking, beautiful. amazing, yeah. and of course you got me rock climbing again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have fun doing that. And of course we did everything wrong, like not enough warm clothing. We well, didn't I have forgot any, my jacket. Yeah, we didn't have any water, food. <laughs> and no cell service, yeah. and we didn't tell anyone what we were doing, not yeah. even our producer. <laughs> I know, what not to do. Yes. Anyway, we have a winner for our Abbey Grind Trail. So congratulations, Ray and Iris Mose, and they want a coffee mug, journal, and a Swiss Army like knife. And that was donated by Omega Engineering, a division of Ecora. Yeah, and such a great interview with Marika. It's yes. always um, so great to you know talk with her, and so moving and powerful. I know yeah. we learned a lot about systemic racism mm -hmm. and how we can make a difference. And I ended up having yeah. lots of conversations with Bruce about it mm -hmm. and other people because yeah. we're trying to understand, and exactly. it was really great. Yeah, and I loved her saying, "Keep standing up." Don't just be not racist, be anti-racist. I love yeah. that. Yeah, so now for next week, we're interviewing Leah Bergen, who has worked extensively in communications, education, and training throughout her career. And she's passionate about social and emotional intelligence and equipping others. And next week, we're gonna hear yeah. all about her next exciting venture. Anyone who wants to share with us questions, feedback, or requests for topics, email at chillandchattv at gmail.com. Until next time, Cheers! Keep, Keep chilling, chilling and chatting! chatting.